We will have um, our regular business meeting followed by a budget workshop this evening. Could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, thank you everyone for coming. I see we have um, a lot of students out there and we're looking forward to hearing from you um, later this evening. Uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? We do not. Okay. Um, we do have one announcement, which is I would like to wish a happy birthday to Reed Dowdy, who is 18 tonight. <laughs> And um, chose to be with us um, as opposed to Hugo's restaurant. Um, and his mother uh, dropped off some cupcakes for us to have a little later, which is very sweet of her. Uh, and Reed, can you tell us what the first thing that you did today was? I registered to vote. <laughs> good for you. Right. Very good. This kid's too good to be true. I know. Well, happy birthday. And thank you for being with us. It's an honor um, to share this day with you. Um, all right, so we will move on to approval of the school board minutes um, from Tuesday, February 8th. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve the school board minutes as written for February 8th, 2011. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. Seven, six. Okay, um, comments by student representatives. Do we have anyone from Pond Cove, or do you want to speak to anything in Pond Cove? No? Um, uh, we did the middle school last week. Uh, Reed and Matt, anything going on? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, third quarter's winding down for the high school. Ends March 25th, I believe. So kids are starting to finally concentrate and try to get whatever they're missing in. Um, winter sports season's finally done. We'll hear about that later, but definitely a great season for everyone involved. A lot of good results and uh, great times. And the one act runs this week for the high school theater. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely worth checking out. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, the jazz bands at the high school, the concert jazz band and the number one combo went to Berkeley last Saturday. And the concert jazz band received an honorable mention in the category, which is a fourth place. Mm -hmm. um, the play, which Matt was talking about, Find Me, um, is going to the one at regionals on Saturday. If they're successful in that venture, then they'll continue on to the states. Mm -hmm. um, spring season is starting to begin, as Matt explained. And lastly, um, there's a high school band and choral concert on March 17th that uh, the band's been preparing for. March 17th. Do you know, is that in the evening at like 7 o'clock or so? Okay, that's great. Um, the one act, do you know where the, the regionals are? Does anyone know? Is Westbrook, I think. Is it Westbrook? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm sure that will be on the website for people who are interested. Um, thank you. Um, do we have any comments from the public on agenda items? None? All right, so we'll move on to number five, communications. I see we have several retirements. Yeah, I'm trying not to take this personal, but <laughs> since I've arrived, these letters of retirement some of have our been best teachers. piling in, I know. <laughs> but tonight's group of retirement letters are Judith Ferrente. She has over 25 years <clears throat> experience with us at Pond Cove. Uh, Conrad Barthium, who has 13 years experience with us at the middle school. Elaine Brunel, our high school math teacher, she has over 20 years experience with us. Um, and Margaret Welch, uh, who has over 23 years experience with us. And a bus driver, Ray Michaud. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's the last list of retirement letters that I bring to you. Could I ask one question? Mm -hmm. Is Elaine gonna continue in the Achievement Center or is she going into full retirement? 
Oh. Well, I just want to say for Elaine Brunel, uh, she's taught my son math for two years now, and I, I can't think of a finer teacher I've ever met since I was in first grade through law school. She's just an absolutely wonderful teacher and a wonderful lady. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions around the retirement? Okay. So um, I'd like to give a quick update on the superintendent search process. Uh, as some of you may know, the search closed on the 25th of February. Uh, we wound up with 15 candidates from nine states, which we considered to be um, a pretty healthy number given the economic climate. Um, and so those applications were taken to our Credentials Review Committee, which we talked about in the last meeting. Uh, the Credentials Review Committee, which was made up of um, teachers, um, district leadership team, community members, um, and school board members met for several hours on Saturday um, to review the credentials. And I'd like to thank the individual members of that team for giving their time. Um, Michael Moore, Sarah Lennon, Dominic DePatsy, Jeff Shedd, Dwight Ely, Lynn Spadinger, Gail Rice, Sandra Sinclair, Laura Lee Scheidel, and Bill Marshall were all part of that team. Um, and it was a tremendous team, very um, experienced, um, uh, very high quality um, level of work done. Uh, so the board met last night to review that information and, and we have several candidates to interview. Those interviews will begin happening in the next seven to ten days. And I would expect, I hope for, an announcement mid-April. Um, I'm sorry to say there was one application that we did not receive, the gentleman to my right, but uh, we did receive many um, wonderful applications and we're looking forward to interviewing people. So that is the update process, or the process update as of now. I will keep people informed as we move along. Um, so now we'd like to move on to athletics. Uh, and Before you do, <coughs> if the gentleman on your right would just say, <laughs> if he was going to do another superintendency, it would be delighted to do it in this community. It's a terrific community, and um, I would love, if I was seven to ten years younger, to be at the head of the line of the application pool. So, just wanted to clarify that. Okay. <laughs> I tossed that to you without telling you I was going to mention it. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we will move on to athletics now. Um, and we had a wonderful winter season in athletics. Uh, and Jeff, do you want to introduce your, your group? So generally in the past, what I've done is at the end of each season, kind of provide a small glimpse of some highlights and accomplishments, and um, after I was boasting at our last budget meeting, I thought it would be a great idea if you could hear it directly uh, from our students. So um, I'm very pleased to um, introduce our captains and team representatives from our winter athletic programs. Um, they're just going to give, they've been instructed to give just a brief um, season summary of their accomplishments. and. Uh, and I have a couple of thank yous, but I'll do that after. So I'll turn it over to. Oh, out of order. Okay. Vinny. Hello, I'm Vinny Delphilo, one of the captains for the Cape Elizabeth Boys ice hockey team. Um, regular season, we finished 13 and 5, which landed us third place in Western Class B. And we started off 0 3 and had a turning point in that game versus Chevres, where we won technically 5-4, but a penalty was called after time had expired, and they got a penalty shot, scored, won it in overtime. And after that, our team really turned our season around and went 13-2 and in our last 15 games, including two five-game win streaks. And we had two, three big victories in that span, one over Greeley, which was the first time we beat them in the regular season, the last five years, and two overtime victories versus Kennebunk and Winslow 
the Kennebunk game we scored with five seconds left in overtime. In Winslow, we came back from 4-1 in the third period. Um, we got knocked out in the first round in the playoffs by York. It's a 5-1 game, tough battle. Um, some highlights of the season, myself and another teammate, Nick Breed, were appointed Player of the Month of November and February. And uh, I guess our inspir inspirational moment was, against Greeley, we had a lot of players step up, take a big role in that, and say a lot of things in the locker room, on the ice, keep us going. We eventually got that win 4-3. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the coaches and players, especially Barrett Heisen, who was our assistant coach, but left and went back to Alaska to work on an oil rig to help support his family. But we missed him. He was definitely a good figure for us. Gave a lot of nice speeches in the locker room during our winter break in that tournament. And I think that's about it covering hockey. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jack Barber, and I was one of the uh, Alpine ski team captains. And um, this was really a monumental winter for us um, in past years. We really, we didn't, I mean, in past years, we didn't have enough uh, ski racers to even qualify for states. And we, used, we typically got last or second to last in most of, the, most of our races. So um, this year, the men, uh, the Cables of Men, uh, won their first race ever. And in states, we finished fourth. Um, as well as two of our ski racers finished in the top ten in the state. And um, actually, one is... Uh, qualified second for the main skates uh, main ski state team so he'll be actually skiing next weekend um, his name's Sam Barber um, but besides all the accomplishments we've we've achieved this year um, it's really our, our, our coach Garrett and coach Kintai have really created an awesome environment for and everyone feels comfortable we all have fun I look at all these other teams and they're Everyone's getting so intense and everyone's so worried about their runs and we're able to joke around at the start and we just have a, we just have a great time and um, the best part is, is that this team's only going to get better. Um, I think they're going to be probably top three in the state in Class B next year so um, I just want to thank them for a great four years and um, that's it. Thank you. Hi, I'm um, Jack Queen. I was a captain for the indoor track team this year. Um, this was a good year. We were competitive. We were in a lot of meets. Um, we didn't win any, but we came close, which is great considering that we had a lot of new faces. We had almost 80 kids, which is, uh, I think it's a record turnout. So that was really good. Uh, lots of new people doing different events, just getting a feel for indoor track. So hopefully next year the team will be stronger. Uh, with that experience. We had a really good time throughout the season. Um, even though we didn't win any meets, we still um, were always in them and people always were able to laugh and have a good time. So that was a lot of fun. Um, for states, at the end of the year, I think we had 10 kids qualify. Uh, most of them were girls for, with distance, which is great for them. And a few went on to the New England meets, I believe. And I'd just like to thank Mr. Worthley, the head coach, Ms. Ward, assistant coach, um, Coach Eliza, the distance coach, and Coach Marles, the throwing coach, and then also the boosters. They funded new blocks, um, new shots, and new um, batons for relay, so that was great. It really helped the kids practice their starts throwing and handoffs, so that was um, a great help. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I'm Lindsay Rand. I'm Paul Wenberg. I'm Abby Armstrong. We're from the um, swim team, swim and dive team. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's like start. Uh, okay. Well, the girls team, um, we got a bunch of new swimmers this year, which is great. Um, and every, and all a bunch of them wanted to qualify, and a lot of them achieved that goal. And we had a bunch of girls going to the state meet. Um, and throughout the season, um, there's a ton of growth. Um, girls are dropping up to about 30 seconds in some races um, and it was really great and a lot of different strokes were being uh, practiced and everyone was just growing very well and um, throughout the season we kept a pretty even record for meets which was good and at the Southwesterns which is our second biggest meet